from Petco Park in beautiful downtown San Diego. A great night for baseball ahead on the show. It's the Chicago Cubs and the San Diego Padres. First pitch coming at you right after the break. Just about set to go now. And on the mound for San Diego in this one, Dylan Cease. Power pitcher. He's going to speed you up with the fastball velocity. And out of his hand will explode the breaking ball. Very difficult for hitters to keep that front side closed and hit the ball the other way because they know if they're not ready to pull the trigger, the fastball will beat them. Ian Hatt, the leadoff batter as he swings through it for strike one. First pitch, 640. The wind and the pitch. You see the velocity, 97 with that fastball. Way upstairs, and a count one and two. And the slider just misses. Really close pitch down around the knees there, and you could see him asking where it missed. Probably doesn't agree, but it appears he's ready to move on to the next pitch. And here it comes. Now one out to right. Makes the grab one down. Here's a look at the Cubs lineup. This is a veteran-led lineup right here. A lot of players with plenty of experience singing. Yeah, no doubt about that, Boog. These guys have been around the game for a long time, and they may not have the flash that they once did, but they've got the wisdom to be able to understand different situations, be able to think with the opponent and sometimes in front of the opponent. And you always seem to see a team like this. They come to the ballpark, they know how to get down to business, and they understand what the job is at hand. Slap the other way, foul. Way high there, and it's one and two. One out, base is empty. Swing and a miss, struck him out. Well, classic pitch sequencing there to change eye levels for the punch out. That fastball on the pitch before was off. It was very competitive. And that gets you thinking that he might try to climb the ladder. But then the curveball out of that same tunnel just falls off the table and you can't make contact. Bellinger up to hit. And yeah, that's a little bit high. And it's one and oh. Two outs, space is empty. Foul ball. Two outs. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Two down, nobody on. Fights that one away, still one and two. Riding to the plate. Stays alive. Five foul balls in a row. I have no idea what that feels like, but you got to love this battle. Just wondering who's going to blink first. That one not close. And the count is even two and two. And there's a ball. Wow, this guy's really battling up there as if 
his run is the game-winning run. I love his tenacity. Here's a high Ready chopper, and he picks it up, and he'll put it in his pocket. Ripped to short. Whips it across, and Bellinger is out. And that is that. Three up, three down for him there. And now the Friars will get their first chance. No score. And we're back. And starting in this one, Kyle Hendricks. What do you look for here? Well, Boog, he's the type of guy that you can bet on to give you quality innings most of the time he goes out there. Guy knows how to pitch. He's got good stuff. Sometimes it can be what even plus hard? stuff. First time through the, the order, though, I think that's going to tell us a lot about how he's feeling today and how he's going to settle into this ball game and attacking hitters. Xander Bogarts at the plate now. That's ball one. Bogarts who wears that number two on his back for his idol, Derek Jeter. Right through there for a strike. I got a ball, one strike. And that one is lifted in the air. Dives and it gets by. Makes the turn and heads for second. And he's got a leadoff double. With the way defenders track down balls these days, I mean, both from the infield and in the outfield, there really aren't a lot of base hits on balls hit like that. But there's always a little room back behind the first and second baseman to drop a long dart in there, and he found a way. Fernando Tatis Jr. to hit here. That ball one way one, outside, right. and that's ball one. Bogarts stands at second with no outs. On the ground to the left. Madrigal on to first. One gone bottom half of the first. Let's take a look at the Padres lineup. And Chris, this group has been struggling to put up runs lately. Well, they haven't been on base a ton, and even when they are, they haven't been hitting very well with the runners on base. So they need a player or two to really step up, have some quality at bats, hit according to the situation, and sort of break out of this. I think if they do, the rest of this lineup will follow. Next to hit, Jake Cronenworth. And that one fouled off. And it's second. Ball oh, one there. Ball to strike. Hard hit to right center. That's a base hit. And they strike first as they take a one nothing lead. Comes through with the RBI. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out fine and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. One down, runner at first. Here's Machado. That's and that's ball. down and away. And the pitch. Ball. In the dirt. Two ball. To no. second, but way too late. Safe there. Cronenworth in the scored position on the wild pitch. And there goes the double play possibility. Really good read by the runner there. His secondary lead, he anticipates the trajectory going down and gets a really nice jump up to second base. Now he's in scoring position. He's taken away the double play opportunity. One out and a runner at second. Next pitch is outside. 
Hitter's got some good opposite field power. What I like about something being hit to the right side into the outfield is that the base runner at second has a very good read and can determine whether or not he can score on that base hit. And ball four to a board. That just came apart right there. Four pitch walk and guy at the plate was not going to help him out by swinging at something out of the zone. So digging in now for San Diego, Ha Sung Kim. And that gets the top of the zone for a strike. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Strike two. Don't play situation here. He's been working up in the zone. Typically, you look for guys to get that ground ball, see if he adjusts on this next pitch. And the right-hander deals. The and shortstop one. takes the ball. Way to lay off that pitch down. Great. Swing and a miss. And he's down on strikes. And there's two away. So first and second with two outs. Stepping in for San Diego, Jerickson Profar. And downstairs. Two on, two outs. Down the line. Nobody can get there, and it's a foul ball. Two outs. Couple of base runners at first and second. Also really good at bat. What I like about this guy, his bat stays in the zone for a long time. Gives him the ability to foul off tough pitches. Fouls it off, still one and two. Right-hander kicks, deals. Close, but called a ball. Two balls, two strikes. And another ball. I got to call NLDS game four here in 2022 at Petco Park where the Padres knocked out their rivals, the L.A. Dodgers. The place was just nuts the entire game. Terrific fan support. In the air, out towards left center, and that'll fall for a base hit. Runner from second crosses the play. It's 2 0. Nice and bad right there. Not just the result, but also seeing a lot of pitches. Made him really work out there on the mound. That ball right there landed in what they call the no man's land, meaning it's not really a spot on the field where you can expect anyone to get to it easily. I mean, it's a tough play going back for the shortstop, but also for the outfielders trying to come in. They got to go a long way as well. Now, Luis Campusano. Just missed. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. First and second, two down. That one ripped left field. Count going back. Grabs it right up against the wall. But two runs for him, and they jump ahead. We'll move to the second now at Petco Park. It's the Padres two and the Cubs nothing.
Top of the second. So now it's the Cubs hitter in the four hole, Christopher Morell. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown nope, inning. Down. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Breaking no. ball inside. And the count is 2-0. Eric Summersgill, our plate umpire. One thing to watch out for, Boog, is what side of the plate Summersgill might be favoring. He usually sets up at an angle. Pitchers sometimes will try to figure that out early so they can attack that spot and get as many strike calls as possible. Kicks and fires. Pulls that one foul. Great swing and solid contact. Just a little too quick. He's got to stay back a little longer. The pitch. Fouls it back with two strikes. Miss the inside corner. Three and two now. Really good take, especially with two strikes. Waves it to Bender for the strikeout. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Dansby Swanson stands in. First pitch misses. Swanson goes six foot one, 30 years old now. A former first round pick back in 2015. One down, base is empty. Nope, that's inside. That one misses, and it's 3-0. And it's ball four. He missed down low. Pretty easy walk right there. Last pitch wasn't even much to think about. Man at first with one gone. Now here is Michael Bush. That's in there. That's strike one. Now this team is definitely looking for a big swing of the bat right here. Try to close that gap. But, you know, at the very least, if you could find a way to manufacture that run from first, it feels like it's really important to getting back into this ballgame. Swings through that one for strike two. Two really good back-to-back -back sliders. Now in an 0-2 count, he's feeling real confident about finishing this hitter off. He can go anywhere he wants. And a pitch. Battling here as he fouls it away. Foul ball, it stays nothing in two. Throw to first, and he's back safely. With the tying run at the plate, here at the top of the second. Gets a piece there, we'll do it again. Going two now. Rudder takes off, pitches low. Safe at second, and he easily steals the bag. Swanson over at second, one down. This to third, and that should be extra bases. Coming home. 
He scores, and they trail by one. Well done. Drives in the run. I really like that swing, man. He didn't just push it the other way through the infield. He drove it that way, and it kind of makes me think he was thinking opposite field as he stepped into the box. Got a pitch he liked, and he got it done. And it's second with one away. Here's Nico Horner. Fought off foul. Bounce to third. And that chance handled. Got him. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. Here's Nick Madrigal. And when you talk about elite defensive third baseman, this guy is at the top of the list. Oh, he doesn't get the call. And that is ball one. And a ground ball to first. He takes it on his own. That ends the inning, and they limit the damage. Cubs pick up a run on the RBI double. And this is now a 2-1 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at Petco Park. And the batter now, number 22. The third baseman. Hendricks back to work. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Singy wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boog, he wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be because it's not always obvious what adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location, sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're tipping your pitches. He's going to need to figure it out quickly, though. Ground ball, left side. Throw off line, he's safe. And a nice job there to keep it from getting away. Jackson Merrill, the next up for the Padres. That's inside. Ball one. The pitch. And that one wrapped foul. The pitch. Good eye in that spot. That one misses. Three balls and a strike. Three balls, one strike. Fouls one off out of play. Back to our left. Clearly trying to stay back a little bit longer for that changeup as he fouls that fastball back. Double play ball to second. Over to Swanson. He turns it. On to Bush. It's a double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play. But right there, very well done. Bogarts batting for the second time, and that's strike one.
The 0 1. Well, he's gotten ahead with two pitches down in the zone. He has plenty of options right here. He can go up, he can go away, he can add velocity, he can subtract. Two down, nobody on. Bottom half of inning number two. Ball one to Bogarts. 0 2 fastball way out of the zone. I think he's trying to speed him up. Got to stay back. Off speed's probably coming. Left field, way back there. That one's back. Gone. An absolute smash to left. It's 3 1. So, Singy, this is a little bit of a surprise. A guy known for line drives hits one over the fence. Well, if you're a little too early, you'll get some elevation and the ball get out of the ballpark. For him, it's kind of a mistake. But you know what? When you have such a good approach, every now and then you're going to run into one. Now it's Fernando Tatis Jr. And that's inside. off the inside edge. One and oh. The wide to kick the pitch. He swings and fouls one off. The wide to the pitch. Out to short. And he's safe at first. Some strange defense oh, there. I mean, that's staying within his game right there. I mean, this speedster gets the infield single, and now he's on base to possibly do some damage. I love seeing what guys like this can do to disrupt the game once they get in a position to do so. Cronenworth stands in now and watches strike one. Hendricks throws over. Ow! They got him, and that will end the inning. But the Padres add to the lead on a solo homer. It's now a 3-1 ball game. Back after this on the show. Back here in San Diego, here's Jan Gomes. The catcher, Jan Gomes. Yeah, the right hander back to work. Not well, even close there. Ball one. On the ground to third. What a stop. Gathers and throws. And very nicely done for the out. Third base have to be so quick with their first step reactions. Hot shots like that. That's why they call it the hot corner. That's a perfect example, though. There's no way he gloves that one if he's not dialed in, anticipating something coming his way, staying on his toes every pitch. Really nice job to get back up, set himself, and make a strong throw across the diamond. Ian Happ That's up to hit. And ball one. The Padres trying to protect a two-run lead. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Next offering is in for a strike. Swing and a miss as he was out front. She can live up in the zone all game if guys will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. And that's in the dirt. Down on strikes. Two out. And now the right fielder, Seiya Suzuki. He struck out swinging at his first mm -hmm. at bat. He's hitting for that pop. Came out of the gates really strong. First pitch doesn't find the zone.
inside oh, just play. missed. Well, he looks more focused at the plate and working the count after that first at bat strikeout. And another ball. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game, and sometimes from a bat to a bat. Right through there for a strike. Okay. And yeah, there's ball four. One of the things about that two out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Bellinger in the box with two gone, and takes a look at a called strike. Just missed. Suzuki off of first with two away. Not close with that one, and it's two and one. Tying run at the plate. Ball three. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with the 3-1 count. That one is absolutely belted. In one hops off the wall, should be extra bases. Around third, he'll score easily. It's 3-2. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then the guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like he did right there. Christopher Morell, the next Cub to hit. That's inside. As a pitcher, you know the runner on second is ready to push things with his speed. A base hit is probably going to be a big run, so you really have to execute on the mound. Two outs and one in scoring position. That misses the zone. Two balls, no strikes. Just missed. I almost feel like he's frustrated a little bit. He wants to be challenged. Dansby Swanson waiting to hit for the Cubs. Next offering is in for a strike. Back to back fastballs in. That last one called for a strike. Probably go away, but look for him to come back in there to try to finish you off. That one back up the middle, and it gets through. Bellinger on his way home. He scores to tie it up. It's 3-0. Well, he comes through clutch with the RBI single. That was big. Just kept it simple. Played Pepper with the middle of the infield and took it back where it came from, and there's just no one there to knock it down. And now let's see if they force some action with good wheels on the bases. Dansby Swanson, the next Cub to hit. The walk and a run scored his first time. Hey. And a good fastball to start him off. That's strike one. The shortstop takes a ball. Next offering misses down and away. Swing and a miss. And it's two and two. 
Well, there's a certain point where you have to commit to what you think you see, and he guessed wrong right there. Nasty slider with just terrific fight at the end. Out to short, to second, there's Bogarts. That's out number three. They put two on the board with a couple of hits, no errors, and one left. We head down to the home half of inning number three. All tied up at three apiece. And welcome back to the ballpark. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. So digging in now for San Diego, Jake Cronenworth. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. And the pitch a little bit low, ball one. On its way to the corner. Reaches for it, but it's foul. Swing and a ground ball off the middle. That's a base hit. So the go-ahead run is on base with a knock. And now it's Manny Machado. Worked a walk in his first trip to the plate. That misses, and that's ball one. With the go-ahead run at first, here in the last half of the third. Close, but called the ball. Yeah, that's ball two. No, no, Home plate umpires trying to tighten things up a little bit. That one's in there. That's strike one. In today's game, not that many fastball counts, but hitters still in the back of their minds, they're looking for one. 2-0 changeup call right there. Excellent pitch selection to go with. Kicks and deals. Hit on the ground might be two. Quickly to second for one. On the bush. It's a double play. Huge sigh of relief right there. Big time pitching to induce the double play. Erase what could have been the go-ahead run. Son Kim, the next up for the Padres. Check swing on the first pitch. Appeal down to first. Did not go. Lifted in the air, right center field. Bellinger sizing it up. Makes the catch. And that will end the inning. We played three. And our score, 3-3. Three, three. And we're back. John Chomby with Chris Singleton and set to lead off the fourth, Michael Bush. The wind of the pitch. It's through for a hit. A leadoff single, and the go-ahead run is aboard. Seems like he got exactly what he was looking for right there. Really good swing right there. He got a pitch that he knew he could handle, allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer, and he hit the ball on the screws. Nico Horner digs in now. First time up, he grounded to third. Splits the plate. Going around. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. The pitch. And that one fouled off. With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. And the pitch. 
Keeps the at bat going with a foul ball. All tied up. Top half of inning number four. Get on the ground to the right side. Over to Kim. One. How about that double play? For me, that's one of the toughest double plays to turn on the infield. The first baseman has to get inside, create a throwing lane to hit that middle infielder to start the double play, and then from there, completing it back to first. Really good job all the way around. Nick Madrigal, the next Cub to hit. He's 0 for 1. Down the left field line, looks like extra bases. Around first, heading for two. The throw to second is offline. He got a pitch he could get to out front, kept his bat through the ball, and didn't pull off or roll his hands over. And that allowed him to rip that ball down the line for the double. Now the go-ahead runs in scoring position, so big opportunity for them to jump ahead late. Man in scoring position with two away. Now it's Jan Gomes. Grounded out his first time. Hard liner. Drops in for a hit. Couldn't run it down. The run comes in from second. It's 4-3. Well, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. When you connect and it jumps off your bat like that, you're thinking double at the very least. But a great swing on it, and man, he wasn't fooled at all. Ian Happ getting ready to hit. The half daddy. Swings yeah. through that one for strike one. Oh one's the count. And he deals. Ball, that's outside. He's been trying to tease the zone with that slider, but these hitters have showed patience not going outside the strike zone. At the belt and fires. Rolled softly, but that goes foul. Man on second, two down. And he hits a ground ball right side. Tosses the first. They limit the damage here. But a run will score in the inning on this RBI double. It's now a 4-3 ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball exclusively on the show. Welcome back. And they turn to a new arm as we kick off the bottom of the fourth. Jose Quas. Well, the best relievers love the opportunity to come in and protect the tight lead late in the ball game. Some of them are just wired different, so we'll see what he's got here. Now batting Jerickson Profar. Singled and drove in a run his no first time here. through. Jerickson. Here comes a pitch. That's down and in. Looking to get the tying run on base. Swing and a tapper that rolls foul. Next offering way off the plate. It's a slider for a strike. Backdoored him with a breaking ball. Just got the corner. There's nothing you can really do with that. Yeah. Next offering down low and in the dirt. Luis Campusano in the on deck circle. Foul ball, he stays alive.
and a pitch. That ball is foul, and the pressure is building. Definitely got the hitter conscious of the pitch inside. Really think the outer half is open. Bounced up the middle. Swanson to first. He didn't make things easy for him there, but they still get the out. Those plays can be tricky. They're routine, but that doesn't mean it's always going to be smooth. He delivered a good play right there. Here's the catcher to hit. Luis Campusano. Fly to left his first time. And clips a corner. The Cubs bullpen with some action. Adbert Alzala up and throwing for manager Craig Council. Holding on to a one run lead. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That's the third magical. Tosses to first, and that quickly two away. If you want to be a great defense, you have to deliver consistently. It doesn't matter how many highlight reel plays you make if you can't execute the small stuff just like we saw. Now the third baseman. And immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Next nope, offering misses, ball. and the count is one and one. Tried to backdoor him with that slider right there, but just missed off the plate. Good pitch, though. Next Two offering ball. is downstairs. Ball. Wouldn't ball chase that, that time. Jackson Merrill on deck for the Padres. And that one sliced foul. Two outs. Gets a piece. And stays alive. Pitcher having a pretty tough time getting that swing and miss. Third foul ball in a row. Eighth pitch of the at bat coming up. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Nothing doing there for the Friars. They still trail it here, four to three. New inning getting started. So up now for Chicago, Seiya Suzuki. Cease back to work. Misses off the inside. And that is ball one. Double barreled action in the bullpen for San Diego. Matt Waldron, the young right hander, up and throwing. Brito also getting ready. Righty delivers. Oh, he gloves it to first. It's there, and that's a great play. Now that the center fielder, Cody Bellinger. One down, there comes Cody Bellinger. One for two. That one to first. Cronenworth steps on He's first out. for the out. The batter, number five, designated hitter, Christopher. And Morrell. here's the DH for the Cubs, Christopher Morell. Outfield playing very deep, not wanting anything over their heads. That's in there, and that's strike one. Oh, one's the count. Late on that fastball. I think he was sitting off speed there. Here's the 0-2. Oh, 
Got him swinging. He chased the changeup. And the Cubs go one, two, three. Cubs are down quietly. And it remains a 4 3 game. Back now, and on the mound, the closer, Adbert Alzali. This is his fifth appearance of the year. Well, one run game, stepping in for San Diego, Jackson Merrill. He hit into a double play his first time up. And a pitch. On the ground at first. And he handles it himself for the out. Well, such a confidence boost for a reliever to come into the ball game and get the first hitter he faces. Just makes everything slow down a little bit, and then from there can really settle in. Now here's Xander Bogarts now. He's already homered in this game. And that's outside. Ball one. And that clips the inside corner. Really good cutter that he's able to front door and back door. That pitch is devastating. On the ground to third. In time to Bush. Bogarts retired. Hey, man, four pitches, two outs. That is an excellent base. Last chance for the Padres. And the batter will be Fernando Tatis Jr. And fouled off. And the 0-1. And that one fouled off. A one-run lead, last half of inning number five. That misses, and the count one and two. This could end it. And another ball. That one misses for countdown. Big pitch coming right here. Last thing he wants to do is put the tying run on base, but he can't groove on either. Two down, nobody on. Foul ball, and it remains a full count. Ball four, he walked in, and that keeps things going. One of the things about that two-out walk, the base runner over at first base is going to have a very aggressive secondary lead. So a ball down the line or into the gap will produce a two-out RBI, and those are the best. That is, if you are the offensive side of it. Big situation right here. you got some speed over there at first base. He represents the tying run question is do you send him and get him in the scoring position or do you let that batter swing and maybe put you ahead Tatis runs pitch outside goes too late for the throw see well it really doesn't matter what the situation is when a guy like this gets on first you know he's going to steal second at some point during the at bat nice job to get in the scoring position the defense probably knew it was coming but they just couldn't do anything to stop it Lifted to left, and this should do it. He's got it. Ball game. And the Cubs hold on to win a tight one as this one ends as a one-run ball game. And the final score here, 4-3. The Cubs go home a winner for Chris Singleton and our entire outstanding crew here at MLB The Show. I'm John Chomby saying so long.